Hey everybody, it's Ethan McKinley's Questionable, and here we are once again with my lovely co-host slash producer, Alexandra Bell. Uh, charming and lovely guest is Larry Ann Richards, who's been a pop star, an actress. Uh, dog walker. Dog walker. <laughs> she's sang, she's danced, she's, uh, she's written things, she's written songs, she's hung around with the the A list, the B list, and now she's with, is there even a, an alphabet letter that covers me? <laughs> I, probably not. Uh, she's about to launch her one-woman show, Whatever Happened to Lala Choquette, which is heading to Edinburgh very soon. Larry, welcome to the show, you Thank lovely you. woman. I love your hat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome. Uh, so, yeah. te tell us, what's this show about? Ah, Whatever Happened. What did happen? What did happen? Um, well, Lala Choquette. Ear. What? To what? What well, happened, your ear. You you, I am, yeah. <laughs> I thought you said to my career. What happened to my career? No, <laughs> no, would not say that. <laughs> Um, yes, you've La had an La amazing Chocolate. career. <laughs> I haven't. I'm <laughs> sitting here. What, doing is, this. what <coughs> is a career? A career is just, um, <clears throat> I think, reinvention, reinvention. And I decided by the time I had reinvented as much as I could to shove it all into one, well, shove, to write it all into one show. And that's what I did, actually. I just thought, let's just use everything a licorice all sorts of career parts. Completely. It's a sort of pick and mix. Revels. Yeah. She left oh. the coffee ones out there, and it was it the orange I one no one likes as well. Yeah, those two, but the rest is all good. I like I like the the, the coffee ones. <laughs> I like the coffee ones. Lala Choquette is my alter ego. She comes from Sanvair Pusquindis Goger Huern Jobwith Sandisilio Gogogoch Ogogoch, and uh, she um, f at the age of nineteen she went down to London. To, to pursue her life. That uh, long Welsh word you just said, is that that famous place that's the longest word ever? Is it that, it really? Mm. Oh, is that North I'm or I'm not sure if it's the longest Wales? word ever, but it's certainly, it is a place. It's a place in, in North Wales. North, yeah. okay. Yeah, so yeah. like the most holidays I've had as a child have always been in Wales. It, the most holidays. Growing up a one-parent family, the most exotic locale you could be taken to is either uh, Shell Island or Conway or Rill we've <laughs> been to. The Welsh I Mountain Zoo, been there, done it all. <laughs> Eurius Park. Yes. Yes, yes, Common Bay, done it all. And that's, yeah, that's the area I come from. So I based this character um, from that area because it was just easier, really. So she talks a little bit like this. Um, she's very North Walian. And, um, and to pursue a, a singing career, she moved down to London and uh, to make ends meet she did lots of different jobs and then uh, by fluke she ends up working as a cloakroom attendant at the blitz club in the um, which was the home of the early 80s synthesizer and fashion movement it is you were working alongside boy george then i assume yes <laughs> or was he pre or post well, he was a cloakroom boy at the blitz i mean wasn't that's it? actually yes lala took over the job from boy george and um, that's what Lala did. But of course, you know. He got sacked for stealing out of uh, pockets and uh, handbags, didn't he, I think? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Very diplomatic. <laughs> I told you you'd not have to kill Not naming names. Me. No, not naming names. <laughs> but anyway, um, Lala, yes. So this is a, a, there's 17 songs, 12 costume changes. Um, I don't know, guest artists, dancers, throw it at them, really. That's oh, it. Brilliant. So is it a kind of, well, the journey of your life, essentially, in uh, vignettes of, of sorts, uh, interspersed with songs? How does it work? It's, uh, well, basically, I decided that I didn't want to just write a story of my life, but I use it as a template hmm. to um, this character called Lala. And um, so Lala... <coughs> becomes Lala Choquette once after she's done a load of things and she, she actually does form a band or helps form a band called Shock. So that's where she gets her surname oh. and becomes Lala yeah, Choquette. Of course, yeah. so, so it's not Larianne, Larianne. That's right. Los Angeles Larianne. So good they named it twice, <laughs> uh, her twice. No, it's not. It's, it's Lala Choquette is my alter ego. And, and she has stories to tell that you just would not believe. And in fact, people don't believe them. And you never know if they're real. Well, that's why you're here. Exactly. Well, the thing is, is that even in the show, what I, what I do is I use pictures of me and videos of me to back up the stories. So people don't really know if, they're, if the story that Lala tells you is real or not, but I do show the footage. So it's a multimedia show and... Um, it's great. I just, I love it. I, l I, did a, I did a degree a couple of years back and my, um, 
I did a lot of research into something called failure, and it's a, it's a way of training actors. I'm br- I've got an MA in that, actually. Yeah. You have? Oh, in failure, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, I was, were you there at the same time? I did, because I did an MA. I studied at the University of Life, and ah, we came out with okay, the, the okay. highest okay. marks possible for failure. Ah, but that's good. <laughs> but that's the point. Failure <coughs> is not perfect. Failure means that you've got room for creativity. Well, there are no mistakes. You learn, fr- I, I hope just learning curves right and not yeah, mistakes totally and um you know if you go yeah. to um it, it just means you're just off balance it means that it just means there's room for, for more interesting do you agree that alex am i off balance yes thank <laughs> you what was off balance <laughs> me ah. i was just asking what she what she thought are you off balance i think so yes yeah well, i that's think good. all great artists are successful or not totally. i hope totally <laughs> so failure is something which i love i love I, and then it's f- it can be funny, it can be sad, it can be creative, and and th- and, this, and the show goes through those kind of. Well, how does that? You said you said you did a degree. That's in uh, a master in acting. You're an acting teacher now, or qualified to do so, I right? I am. I am. I'm. I am qualified to coach. Was that part of the study, the f- the failure section? Yeah. Yeah, it was actually coping with that, coping with rejection, and not no. Being it's an approach. It's a pedagogical approach to teaching acting. So if you don't just do straight Stanislavski or method, there's Meisner lots of and Meisner, Laban kinesphere, Laban exactly. <laughs> um, so this failure, I mean, failure is is more I- entwined with what I did my dissertation in, which is play, hmm. and um, and it just. Oh, it's just fantastic. So I just see everything now through play. I see it through play and play, and then <coughs> you know aspects of making a mistake and picking yourself back up again. And it's all so people like Jacques, Jacques Lecoq mm-hmm. and um, Philip Gollier, and that goes on to you know sort of Sacha Baron Cohen and people. So they th- that's their their approach very much. Is that where he studied? Um, Sacha Baron Cohen's kind of was very much with Philip Gollier. Yeah, right. Philip Gollier, who is did who did a lot of clown and failure being in the shit yeah. is what he called it and I um, and John Wright um, Clown Lab um, Peter Lilly um, yeah, Mick Barnfather Cal McChrystal Cal McChrystal was the uh, the movement director for um, a man uh, a, a man and two governors you mm-hmm. know? Um, and so there's there's a lot it's a, it's physical theater it's physical theater and it's fun <coughs> and slapstick three stooges slapstick, stuff slapstick yeah commedia dell'arte you know exactly so slapstick how did you find it was this at, apart from what you've just done when you were at drama school how did you find that well, did you fit in well or did you like it or did yeah, it get did you, were, did you go against it i imagine robert i was robert and you were there yeah we were <laughs> um I was I was eighteen. I, I went to I went to Wherever Douglas age eighteen from an all girls boarding school, and um, I arrived in London and um, and there's Robert Perino, you know, in my my year. Um, I I found it uh, bewildering. I don't think I I never wrote anything down. Mm. Um, I, 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 I I think I was I was almost actually I was almost thrown out off the degree in the first term because I was just like a in headlights however I was a really good we had um we had some kind of exercise where you had to be a tramp mm-hmm. and I was an incredibly good tramp and so and uh, seriously yeah. yeah we did a similar one I had, to, I had to be mud and leaves getting cash out of a cash machine wow and I refused to do it which they didn't like very much they didn't like me at drama where school w- where were you uh, the Birmingham School of Speech and Drama oh yeah I know but uh, yeah, I was railing against things constantly because I was wanting to put on plays and do things, and I always felt there was a lot of filler in the course. I think you could condense the course down to a year instead of three years. I was quite outspoken. That's yeah, they don't like that. No, no, no. I mean, <laughs> if you're in Russia, you know, seven years, that's what you train. I mean, you know what I mean? It's like three years, th- people on the continent are very surprised at being even three years, mm. really. And I'm sure that's more hardcore, though. Like, I, th- I do feel in when I was at drama school, there was a lot of uh, like yoga and body conditioning and this and that and when I actually got out into the world and went to auditions be they even for like the simplicity of an advert I I I I had to kind of learn it as I went and all the stuff that I needed for the world uh, wasn't present on the course I felt yeah so yeah come to my classes I might do that (laughs) I need all the help I can get (laughs) when when I I just (laughs) do it freelance and I I do feed that stuff in, which I think is important, actually. What was the sphere of st- what were you gunning for when you went to drama school? Was it uh, musical theatre or acting or singing? I went. I went on a straight acting course, and oh. um, 
so Web, yeah, Weber Douglas three years. Um, but I did sing, and I I did get the lead in a couple of musicals there, mm. and I got a very good agent because of it mm. actually. But I but I left drama school and then went straight into the pop business. So that's what I did originally, and just but you know, but then after two or three years of doing pop business. I then, through the pop business, got a, an agent because I had a classical training. Mm. It just kind of stood you in good stead. What's I that think. about? What's going on? You want some Coke? Coke. Oh. <laughs> not that kind of Coke, if you're <laughs> listening, not watching the video no, on YouTube. No, where no. It's Coca Cola, the drink. Mm. Alex wants some Coke. Relax, everybody. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's all right. Did you, uh, did, was that a conscious choice or did you fall into the pop thing by accident then? Actually, we... Um, was that because of the Blitz or... No, what happened was that we... Um, Robert and I went on holiday to India and um, we stayed... We didn't backpack. We stayed in like five-star hotels because Robert's mum was Slumming best friend. It. Yeah. <coughs> so we hung out with Bollywood movie stars and, and ambassadors. So we mm. literally weren't backpacking. <laughs> People go backpack. And because of that... These hotels had um, discotheques, mm -hmm. and we just started d dancing, and it was a kind of weird, a pash type dance. Mm. Mm -hmm. When we came back to England, we got our. In those days, you had to get an equity card through getting. Um, um, you had to have a contract of some sort, so we got a variety contract to dance in a club, and um, and we we just formed a, a couple of other people who were doing the same sort of thing, and then we met. We did s in shop windows as well, dancing in shop windows. Oh, really? uh, yeah. Okay. Um, and then we met Barbie and Tim, Tim Dry and Barbie Wild, um, and they were um, mime artists. Tick and Tock. Well, <coughs> Tock then was, a, was actually a guy called Sean, and he oh. was a friend, yeah. Um, he was a friend of uh, Barbie and Sean's. And then the, the six member uh, rotated a couple of times. We had fantastic people. Um, Penny, Dun Penny Dunlop, who was... Um, uh, hot Gossip Girl, and there was Karen Sparks. And hot Gossip, for anyone who doesn't know, is the I guess the one of the famous dance groups, wasn't it, mm. from uh, the 70s, Arlene they Fi were quite popular. Yeah, Arlene Phillips's. Wasn't, didn't one of them go out ma or marry Billy Idol? Mm, Perry. Perry, Perry, did. Perry Lister, that's yeah, it. Yeah, Perry yeah. did, yeah, that's right. Um, but we were managed by the same management company. So if there were jobs Hot Gossip couldn't do, we got them. And mm. it meant things like going to Bangkok in sort of for three weeks and appearing in sort of a strange, you know, questionable nightclub because Hot Gossip didn't want to do it. <laughs> we'd, honest to God, and we'd arrive having travelled via... I, gossip I can't know. do it. Get me shock. Yeah, Stat on the phone now. <laughs> we arrived, um, spent a night, you know, because it was a long-haul flight. We arrived at the airport in, in, in Thailand, met by the owner of the club who was limping. And he said he'd had an accident with his gun. Okay, <laughs> so he'd not been shot by the local triads well, or anything. Well, exactly. exactly. <laughs> That's what it was. I did, actually, I learned how to shoot a magnum when I was there because there was a police officer who really liked us and used to watch us every night and took <laughs> us out and gave us... You know Dirty Harry? You know Dirty he Harry? He loved magnum. Dirty Harry, and that's why he had that gun. Um, so in, in, if you're in the police in, is it Bangkok? You can yeah. just pick any gun you like. Just pick it up. I'll have that one. Dirty yeah. Harry's gun. Yeah, There's no was regulations. A, it, was, it was really... <laughs> so, well, I mean... He loved Dirty Harry, and so we all had we had um, lessons how to shoot a gun, and some. Barren. How did how was the, what was the group structure? Because it's like it's performance art in a sense, isn't it? But there's also yeah. singing with Robert and you, and there's tick and talk and. Yeah, it w I mean, you know, it was. How was the workload kind of doled burlesque. out and shared and stuff? It was circus, burlesque, pop, mime, um, a pash. A pash is a type of uh, dance, a very kind of. Um, passionate uh, dance Robert and I used to do that um, we had snakes on stage we had fire eaters on stage stilt walkers circus really but we were mm. really ahead of our time and it was very well, I was going to say it does sound a lot like the stuff you get in fetish clubs now like uh, the burlesque and fetish performers now yeah, but yeah. like back then I guess there wasn't that there much wasn't. stuff no I mean we had you know people did used to, to follow us around I mean um, yeah, I, that's how we ended up in the Blitz because it was we, we played there as well. It was that kind of 1930s cabaret, you know, that sort of... Um, well, like Brecht. cabaret itself with... Uh, yeah, was it? Oh, Liza God. Minnelli. Yes. So, yes, kind of Brecht in Kurt Weill, um, and, and, and it was dark, 
um, and and people were always on the back foot. You mm. know, it wasn't mm. you didn't know what was going to happen, mm -hmm. and um, suddenly we it was funny, and then it was it was grotesque. I mean, I was on stage once, and Robert lifted me up because I I was a bit like um, like coming out of the f the front of the Titanic, you know, sort of like <laughs> you remember, yeah. and I was I was I was held up above him, and. Um, and, and I don't know, he was tired and he dropped me. And I <laughs> so I hit my head and there was blood pouring out of my head and my arm fell limp. And, um, and I got up and I thought, I know there's something wrong. I know I can't do a handstand because I don't think my arm's working. But they cheered. They cheered because they, they loved the blood. Yeah. But I had broken my arm. Oh, my God. God. Yeah, I had, actually. Wow. And, um, <laughs> it's just there, <laughs> windmilling it going. It was. <laughs> I just piece knew. Of skin just hanging out. <laughs> yes. It was that. It was, um, and I remember, yeah, we went to A&E in my, still in my costume. <laughs> so it was kind of lots of blood. The following day, there was a f fantastic photographer called Bob Cass Clark. Mm. And I phoned him up and I said, I can't do my shoot with you tomorrow because I've, I've broken my arm. I'm really sorry. And he went, great. We can use it. Yes, <laughs> use it. So, so I was there in, um, you know, um, my kind of thousand years BC fur bikini and Anna Ursula Andrus with my broken arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say, well, you're at the Blitz. You were, you've you've been to Bangkok now. Did you go to the Blitz after that thing when I guess shock was kind of becoming something? How did that, what was the Blitz actually like? Well, the Blitz Club. Um, Have you been to the box in Soho at all? No. Because it sounds like they pseudo replicating that. There's a lot of burlesque and like shocking acts on stage where someone like take all the clothes off and. <laughs> Put a pair of scissors inside them. Desmond O'Connor, people like that, yeah. Yeah. And then, and then there was, I know, I, I have heard of it. I've not been there. Yeah. I've worked with Des. Um, uh, so I, I always imagine the Blitz to be something perhaps uh, like I mean, that, it, but it more extreme. I mean, I, the Blitz was, um, at, you know, to be honest, it w um, it was 200 people. It was it was a kind of core to 200, roughly. Um, the, you know, the original, the original focus was rusty and... Rusty with the music and mm. the style and playing the music he loved. And Steve, they shared a flat together, and Steve, um, you know, would only allow people in that he thought understood that ethos. Mm. So when, once you were in, it was just people dancing and that do, 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 do you know that? that what dance? kind of people was it? Because, I mean, what year are we in now? Steve 79 Leonard, or 80? Stephen Jones, 1980, 79, <coughs> 80. Well, first of all, it was Because punk is kind of fading dying. out or dying yeah, yeah so dying. what happened to them did they just go away or do they like transform into they did the a lot of, uh, they did a bit i mean there was that turn i mean people i mean certainly people like uh, adam and and um you know billy idol you just mentioned billy idol yeah, I mean, yeah. that was mm. the same sort of transference that that move um the 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 fashion there was a lot of people from st martin's school of fashion who right. um a lot of uh, f people from uh you know, Hazel O'Connor. I mean, everybody. Everybody was just there. Um, Midge, all of Visage, all of Ultravox, um, Spano Ballet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was... That's why I find it so fascinating that, like, so many, f like, world-famous uh, acts came out. But they weren't world-famous. I mean, they came out, oh, yeah. Of course, yeah. at the time. But is, is that because of the association there was so much attention? Is it media-wise or just socially that was on that everyone just came in there and went oh i'll have him that band that band that band i mean how did i mean there were people like you know um spando's manager steve dagger understood how to market them um how to market spandau and mm. um you know there were certain there were ways of feeding the media um and the and uh, it, it was just uh, they were visually visually very you, you could you just had to look at it. So, the marketing of something was very good visually. Mm. Musically, you know, there was there was there was time of change, and um, and then people were able to market this in a certain way. And the record companies picked up on it. Because I mean, anyone listening that doesn't know this, the, you're talking about a club there. You've got Boy George that's yeah. there as the cloak and boy. You've got Billy Idol going there. Mm. Uh, Steve Strange, you from Visage. Well, Is he it Duran Duran as well? Were they, they later? They were in, yeah, no, they were the same time, but they were hanging out in Birmingham. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Just so like the, 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 the names that you can reel off. Yeah. That from, mean, from out of that era, it's just phenomenal. And then for the next, like, 10, uh, 15 years, musically, perhaps, it was just all 
It was. It, it Every was, famous pop song you can perhaps think of, or that is still around now, that you know, all I mean, it came wasn't out of the that. whole of it. You know, the home of it whole. It wasn't the home of it all. I mean, if you if you went, you know, we we would go to Essex and go to the Pink Toothbrush and Depeche Mode would just be playing. You know, we we, we would support. They were supporting us, or we were supporting them. Mm. And if you went down to 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 um, Bath. Um, there was moles, moles, I think, in Bath and um, Blamange, You know, you know what I mean. There, or um, I mean, there were just people around. Mm. Um, I don't think it was Blamange down there. I don't know who was there, who was in Bath at the time. But it was a. T- it was just. I suppose it's it's almost psychic, isn't it? It's like a kind of a vibration, a frequency. Yeah. I, mean, it just, I just Time. can't think of anywhere anything since that has just generated that much kind of creativity. Art-wise, music-wise, just everything came together. Yeah, yeah, it did. I mean, it was fantastic. And to be a part of that must be like feel it fantastic. Was. Yeah, it, but you don't realise at the time, do you? No, because really? you're, you're in the there. eye of the storm. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, fantastic. It's all really. in hindsight. We went back. Actually, there was a kind of blitz reunion a couple of years back, and it was odd being there. In, I mean, it's some, kind of, it's a kind of a top, it's a kind of you know, topless club now, I think. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um. It, it was yeah it was good geographically is it kind of where is it it's by the freemasonic hall isn't it is it down there great somewhere? queen street which i always thought was an act <coughs> and holborn's the nearest yeah, tube right and I, I think that club became queen's actually ah okay i think i went in there once i used to work in uh, uh string fellows as a bartender and we used to all go in i think queen's i think yeah it was like ah. multi-story wasn't it and quite a narrow building yeah so Qu- yeah, yeah yeah queen street it's called queen's okay okay but yeah, it was nothing I imagine compared to what it used to be. It was just a boring, yeah. boring bar. Oh, it was good. It was good. And and it really did happen. You know, mm. Bowie did turn up and choose people he'd wanted for his video. <coughs> I saw that in a documentary and then, like, <laughs> you were all excited to be part of it. Steve was in it, picked the dancers, and they did it on, was it South End Beach or something? Really, yeah, like, boring. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But... It's, I guess he's the godfather in, in a sense, of the neuromantics. So like, what happened when he went in there? Was everyone like too cool for school? Or we, we, no, we, crazy we just for all him? knew that he was around. So there was a kind of hushed. To- he was either. <coughs> it was a hushed tones. About Hello, what was I'm happening. David Bowie. I'm going mm. to the Blitz. <laughs> it wasn't Mick, I think Steve did turn Mick Jagger away, wasn't it? Yeah, I can't remember. There was. A well, story. I was trying to put the that well on the map in a sense that he got turned away because he wasn't dressed uh, correctly he and that kind of was uh, <laughs> better than actually letting him in in certain w- in many ways i imagine yeah yeah and the publicity yeah. that came yeah. so uh, did that j- jump shock into it the whole new league of sorts did that push you even higher well we in a w- i mean our, our f- because we we peered there and w- we we got up in the morning we were just dressed w- that wasn't just our stage clothes that's how we looked i mm. mean that's how we got up in the daytime so but so we worked, y- you we and Le, Ch- Le Choquette were one? At that point, yeah. At that point. The lunatics running the asylum, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. And we, we, um, we had very good managers, actually. We did have um, these um, chap called Ian Burton, Michael Somerton. Um, and they did get us a lot of gigs. And then we went, t- we played uh, in New York for 10 days. Um, and that did was interesting. Did you have sort of creative control over like, what you did on stage? Did you guys come up with the ideas for what you did on stage? Was that all you, or was that your managers? No, that was all lot? us. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. so, diff- so yeah. you end up yeah. kind of like yeah, <laughs> hamstrung or fighting, and an outside creative force who doesn't un- quite understand. You were just you, kind like, of coming up with the. Uh, it would be better if you do this. You should try this. No, we. Th- well, Robert was very creative, actually. Yeah. You know, so um, we would have the vision of, th- you know, the the, the classical training. If, if um, what it was originally was we wanted to, you know, get equity, <laughs> but then we found that we got work in nightclubs, mm. and those nightclubs could be as far as field as, as as Glasgow or Sunderland or, you know, Colwyn Bay. I mean, literally. So. Um, That's disco theatre. No, disco theatre became th- shock when yes, you added Barbie added, and, yeah. and Tim and everyone. Yeah, yeah. But even then, we were doing and and. It was amazing. People who went out just for a night of sort of like you know dancing around the handbag suddenly had this show, and it was a, it was like taking theatre to people who had never seen yeah, it. Was it was amazing, yeah. and yeah. and also you know as an actor or a performer, as a, you know the ethos of creating your own work is not mm. just kind of sitting by the phone and mm. just going, 
Well, that's what we were just saying before we started, didn't we, about your way. You've got gatekeepers, essentially, and you're waiting for them to choose you, and you know you've got something you can want to show it, but there's someone standing in the way who perhaps doesn't have the same vision or even intelligence to see that. Or if, you go to, if, you go, if you go and train at um, Lecoq School in Paris, you know, every, at the end of every week, every week you have to create your own little shows. Mm. Um, they push very much people doing similar to what we did and, mm. and that's um, Complicite you know um, mm. um, McBurney's company came out of there you know that's it so was it's, a, it's a good boot camp in a sense then isn't it that you've, you're kind of forced to kind of come up with something every week and a new idea yeah, yeah. Um, at, at this yeah at this drama school yeah, yeah, yeah. to wow. re yeah to reinvent but yeah I, I you know um, Choquette is a um, it's just constantly as actors, you have to keep learning. And I had to keep, if, if when the television work, I did a lot of television. I speak Welsh. So I did a lot of TV, um, soaps and sitcoms. And uh, sometimes you'd film them in English and then film them in Welsh when we do it back to back and they go out on Channel 4 in, in English. And then it's S4C and is their big channel, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But then when that started to dry up, I then found work <coughs> in Music Hall. So I did that for. Um, a long time. I've got lots of different hats. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, you have. That's uh, I mean, yes, I've got when we're hats. looking back through all your stuff, to like literally, you've done well, everything. My Welsh, been hat. my Welsh hat. My Welsh hat. That's your crucible hat. Yes. <laughs> you need to burn some witches. <laughs> She's a witch. Salem. Blair Witin Manet. Fernaneth Fainy. Manedi Odrosar Mantehi Dai Rosin Goch A Dai Lagadi Anabau Arthaga A Maguelluchi. That's my Welsh folk song. <laughs> Thank you. Do you think, uh, is that like a thing now in Wales? Do, do, pe do people now, this generation, do they learn Welsh still? Or is yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you, in certain areas of Wales, if you live in certain areas, mm. um, when you go to school, uh, you and even even before that, at um, nursery. Oh. So it is a staple from the from the get go. You are taught in Welsh, so everything is done in Welsh. So you, the medium of Welsh is what you're taught through. So, um, I mean, you know, there was a time. At sort of end of the uh, end of the sixties, early seventies, you know, when they did the poll and the language was was going the same way as, as maybe Cornish or Manx or sure. um, Celt, um, a Gaelic. Um, there was a crisis time, and although I learned to speak Welsh, and I didn't speak English till I was about five, mm. um, you know, it, it certainly was. You know, it, it's like you oh you get on and mm. you must you must learn English, and. Um, but then they realise it's an identity, isn't it? And then you lose. It's obviously cultural. A very it's yeah. hugely important. It's hugely, hugely important. Um, the language, really. I mean, you identify Scotland with lots and lots of things. You know, Wales. The language is something that is very, you know, important and strong. What's the percentage of Welsh-speaking television then that's there? Is it fifty-fifty or sixty-forty or what? The actual. Like FFC. shows in Welsh, news in Welsh. Uh, is that the Welsh speaking channel? S4C? Yeah. Okay. But that's more. It's more than that. Um, it's practically all in Welsh. Really? So yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Welsh news or um, Welsh soaps, mm. Welsh quiz shows, um, Welsh reality shows. Yeah. So it's all. It's all in Welsh. Big Brother. I can't, mm. even, I can't do a Welsh accent. Big Come Brother. On. Big Brother. <laughs> <laughs> Depends from where in Wales, also. That's well, a North Walian. Nowhere good, because my accent's rubbish. Well, you would have heard it when <laughs> you were in Colwyn Bay at the North Wales Welsh Zoo. I, know, I need to go back there. I really like Wales. I just haven't been since I was a kid. Ah. Oh. Is the littlest house still there with the Welsh yeah. lady outside selling yeah, fudge and yeah, stuff? Yeah, the yeah, the tiniest yeah. house in, in Britain. Yes, the little, what, what were they the selling? The little red house. Yeah, that's it, yeah, Conway. Yeah. It's right, it's, it is. Just by the castle. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Owned by apparently, I think the last person to own it was a fisherman who was like seven foot two or something crazy. Mm -hmm. And that's what they t they told me. Didn't know that. Yes, the world's Gorgeous tallest then. man in the world's smallest. Tallest man. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Did he speak Welsh? I don't know. We sh we should find out. We need to go back there. 
We should make a day trip or do something. I haven't been to Wales for years. Ah. Shell Island as well, the caravan uh, park there. Ah. Many times. So how did, uh, what is it, shock turn into pleasure and the beast? Pleasure and the beast. Mm. Um. <laughs> well, what happened in the interim time? We're up to the blitz. You've, you're in shock. Yeah. <coughs> Um, I just found this the other day. Um, when, when I did it. What's this? Backstage pass. Pleasure and the beast. Um, Camden Palace. Look at that. Which is now Coco, isn't it, I think? Is that right? Uh, I don't yeah, know. I, I drove so, past yeah. it the other day. It's been many, many things. Mornington Crescent's the <coughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's Coco. It became... Um, I don't know how Robert, Robert decided to leave, and I was a bit of a sheep. <laughs> so I followed <laughs> the Welsh sheep. That's what they do. Well, that was the theme of the documentary about him, wasn't it? That he kind of gets all these amazing opportunities and then goes, eh, and <laughs> goes on to something else. Let's destroy. I sabotage myself. Ism. <laughs> the uh, ism of destroyism. Um, yes. Uh, I mean, I don't know. It was just Robert decided to leave and move on. Was this, we, was this after Wembley? Because you supported Gary Newman, didn't we did, you? We did, we supported Gary Newman. And then we saw one of those performances, and it was you, Barbie, and sh- was it, oh, Carol, Carol Chaplin. Carol, She's Captain. now Sherry Blair's guru. She's <laughs> lovely, Carol. Um, and uh, yeah, great um, lady, actually. Um, we were playing at the Lyceum, headlining at the Lyceum in the Strand, just around the corner from here. The Lion King plays the there. The Lion now, King it? now. <laughs> and. Um, it was a night when George was crying on my shoulder, boy George, because he'd walked all the way to Heathrow and back, Sheen, it wasn't Heathrow, um, because he'd just broken up with his then friend, and, um, and I knew this friend, so he was crying on my back, and I was in the audience, and I knew that it was our last gig, mm. so I was quite weepy too, and then Robert just declared, this is it, <laughs> bye bye, uh, so we became Pleasure and the Beast, I was and the... I decided. <laughs> oh, so that was just you two? <laughs> yes. Oh. Well, to begin with us, just me, and then there was a fantastic guy called Tim Southgate, Tasty Tim. He's now kind of a great... Um, Tasty Tim. He's, yeah, but Tim Southgate is um, fantastic. He's a DJ and a producer. Very, very successful. We had amazing people then. We then became a proper band, Martin Hanlon. Um, uh, there was Marty William, Marty Williamson. Marty, I can't remember. He was, I mean, they went, people went on and... Mm. And Simon, who, who, who now is the musical director for uh, Britney, I think, Britney, Britney Spears, amongst other people. Wow. Mm. And he, used to, he wrote things for S Club, and he was um, Spice Girls at ND as well. Yeah, there was. Yeah, because I like all the songs, and even Shark and Angel Face. I love that kind of period. All the synth music, Giorgio Moroder, yeah. um, Visage, all that stuff. Like it's, uh, it's rusty. It's rusty. And Richard Burgess. It's Burgis. great. Amazing yeah, no, stuff. It is great. It's still my favourite thing. And the, like, the, the new Visage thing I listen to is awesome. I love yeah. uh, the old electronic synth music. It's awesome. It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah the Roland the 8. Just get that out. That's What's the that? The well, that was a kind of beatbox thing, which okay. everybody had. Yeah. So... Um, I think that was it. So yeah. You did an album, didn't you, for Pleasure and the Beast? We did. It was a, like a little, a little one. We did. I mean, the songs were quite good. I mean, the, do you know, as a live band, mm. actually, in all honesty, and, and that aside, we were, it was a great live band. It really was. And we toured in the back. It was a hard back of the minibus touring Europe, you know, sleeping in uh, just weird places and playing weird places. But that's what it was like. How did you find it to get the performance energy when you, you are literally kind of, because you are traveling, it's a think? stress on your immune system and on, on yourself, and then you've got to kind of bring it and on stage. And you're like, Late. well, where, to, the, where this week? Where is this? And like, you're in a place, you're like, oh, I don't want to do this, but you have to go up and The perform. worst thing is sound checking at four o'clock and then not going on till midnight. <laughs> that's kind of, or, you know, not going on maybe till 11 or something. That I'm a, I never used to remember that. It was very loud. Pleasure and Beast was very, very loud. Was this LA you formed this in? Because you spent some time in LA, didn't you? I was did. that during that time? No, or? it wasn't. It was after I went over to LA. I was singing. I was singing. Oh, Hat yeah. number three, folks. Hat number three. Hat number three. What, hey. Which aspect of the Shockette's personality is this? <laughs> this is, um, this is my, uh, my music hall hat. It's not music hall hair. But it's music hall hat. I auditioned for a place called the uh, for a place called the Players Theatre, which 
It's a fantastic place. Again, Where is that? Is that on Melrose? Just, or? Well, it what? No, this is actually in. Uh, it was underneath Charing Cross Station. Oh, right? sorry, I thought we were in LA. So again, it was sorry. A, well, this is how I got to LA um, because I um, the Players Theatre was a music hall, hmm. and they did. They had great connections. It was a place where it was a musical called The Boyfriend. Sandy Wilson's boyfriend, Remember Twiggy, did a film. Um, and it was a very weird uh, place, a theatre place, where everybody, actors and singers, used to go and do old-time Victorian musical. And they had a huge wardrobe. And you could not perform songs and or go on stage unless you had every aspect of your costume was perfect. <laughs> and, um, I mean, and, and there was a hierarchy there. There was all sorts of... I mean, people from... Mar you know, I, I was on stage with people like Marty Webb, um, what was he even called... Uh, Pat Lancaster, there was, I don't know, uh, wonderful sort of fantastic review mm. artists. Mm. And I learned as an actor, fantastic. So you, you're on stage immediately on your own, having to sell a song, you know. And um, anyway, these, I, I was asked four times to go to the States with them. So I toured um, around the States. We, they flew us there with our costumes. And, um, and we would do musical shows, which was just went down, uh, you know, because they loved it. Of course. So it's kind of my old man, my, you know, sort of. Um, so we had things like um, only a glass of champagne, mm. but it led a poor girl into sin. Only a glass of champagne was the door where the devil crept in. Here is the picture, a man and a girl strolling along in the shade. He is a Marquis, the son of an Earl. She is a sweet village maid. He tells her he loves her again and again. She thinks he is loyal and true. And then comes the night when he gives her champagne. And he does what he ought not to do. <laughs> Only a glass of champagne. Etc. 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 So it's musical. Have you got a, you've got a pianist on stage. Yeah, yeah. Stuff, so there's yeah, yeah. pianist. Um, I mean, I do that song. I do loads of different, you know, different sort of. I mean, some of them are absolutely awful. <laughs> it's awful, or they're very rooted in current sort of. So if they were written in sort of 1891, you know, what was ever happening, they were very um, current to that particular day. But there are some songs which are fantastic, and they they travel. Um, You've thought of rewriting one for like a modern day, that and that's modern elements yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So um, a lot of, and that's what I do, and I have done, and uh, you know, because they're, it's, it's, um, it's great to um, respond to an audience. It was the first place I learned to really respond, mm. to respond and not be afraid, and to really connect mm. with an audience. You know, musical theatre people can can tits, can can act tits and, and teeth and tits and teeth and it's, yeah. it's jazz hands and yeah. and it's wonderful and it's kind of glazed yeah. and dead and I and it's like no actually actually you know what I say you know if there's a reaction you know I, I like to hear the reaction. breaking the fourth wall so how big your audience is when you're doing this how are they how big are they you walk into the audience and do you interact at all? I mean, or? I do now. I mean, with yeah. Choquette, I you know my audience are whatever size I can drag down. Um, which may be quite big or not, um, you know, if it was the St. James or St. James Studio or Sanctum. Um, um, so it's sort of, uh, the players, I mean, in, in America, they were, they were really big, really big mm. uh, halls, you know, sort of 500, uh, uh, bigger, because some of them were huge, actually. Mm. And that's hard, because you can't really, but um, they were always very warm and forgiving, <laughs> because they just like, you know, the, the just they like oh how quaint and mm. sweet and it's they like the period um i just have a thing about actors i have a real thing about people if you're going to break the fourth wall then break the fourth wall don't just kind of glaze over and i find you know i went i went to see something quite recently and and i think that's just important mm. to really connect mm. Mm. when you're at the sanctum is that that cinema area downstairs is yeah. that where you perform yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the first time I, I, I went to see Mark, and, and he kindly <coughs> said that uh, Mark and Mandy, and um, uh, but I, I bought my own stage. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> I put a stage in my car and pulled my own <laughs> stage out because I could like because I'm little. I'm not very big. Give us an help with this, Mark. <coughs> <coughs> so um, the second time um, we worked there, they kind Mark built me a stage, 
And, and it was good because he's had other, other people down there. Yes, so mm. it is the cinema room. And, and Choquette uses video footage and live, you know, some um, pictures. Is there enough ceiling clearance when you're on a, on a, on a stage or on a step up? Or? Yeah, but I, I just kind of move to the side and I move okay. around. And I, I actually, that's a very good point because the, one of the times I've done it there, we, 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 the light, we got the lights wrong and sometimes I'd walk across and the kind of pictures on my face and mm. I'd forgotten where I could w look or stand. Um, but I, I work it now, I work it. So mm. if, if, if I tell a story now and I back it up with a picture or a video, I know not to stand. Certain times it's okay. It depends on the space, I guess, you're in, right? It depends on the mm. space, yeah. Mm. <coughs> yeah, but um, so that's how I got to LA. We were talking about LA. We were earlier. Earlier <coughs> on, and and you were doing driving lessons, and I said I'd done some. Well, you I, passed your test. I, but in <laughs> LA, I was determined, um, and I went down to get. There was a reason. There was a reason for it, and I knew if I had my driving license, I could open a bank account, and therefore I had enough insurance. I found. I how did it work back then? Because like. I was there, f you can go for three months, obviously. Yeah. But you, I needed a visa, which I'm trying to like, obviously sort out now. Did you get a visa? Is that I got, I had a visa or? over the time that I worked there. Mm. So I, I, I mean, I just jiggled it a bit, but it was an H, isn't it? It's called an H1 and an H1, mm. whatever. Yeah. And O1. O1, O1. okay. So I went to see a lawyer and stuff, and I got things moving. But I only stayed there for a certain amount of time, and then I left. What did you think of it? Because I, I was, I loved I'd, it. I'd, oh, really? I had a mixed thing, because I think. Did you? Uh, uh, well, now maybe it was different then, because I guess I, maybe in the eighties it was different, because I guess you had that kind of like amazing rock scene on Sunset and the Whiskey a Go Go and things. I, I loved. That's now so it's all kind of like cans of oxygen you can buy and how many crystals have you got around <laughs> your neck and like there's a psychic in every corner and it's kind of a bit airy fairy I find and I a lot of people found me hard to take when I was there because they're like. I speak up openly and normally, I guess, and they're like, "What are you doing?" But, you're, but they don't get the irony. Yeah. You don't get the irony or the cynicism. And you get this kind of like, this almost, well, that, that glazed look you were describing, <laughs> but in real life, when they're kind of like, in case you're someone of influence or you're potentially an employer, they don't want to like, they're like, hi. No, really, that's but great. The point is I love that, that t shirt. But I, I remember, I took my LA glasses off. Um, <laughs> I remember. My Jackie making, O's. My what? My Jackie O. <laughs> I remember making a decision, and this sounds awfully corny, but it's true that if somebody said to me, have a nice day, I would go, thank you, I will. And I'd just absolutely take it on. And it used to make my day go better because actually, if somebody wanted to be really nice to me, I would go, thank you, mm. I am gonna have a nice day. And, and, I, mm. and not go, you don't mean that. And, yeah, and, yeah. I, and I just think, I just had that sort of attitude. I loved it, I absolutely loved Los Angeles. I mean, you know, it was a few years back, but I, I really did and I, I had a fantastic time. Where were you staying when you were there? I stayed in the hills. Oh, very nice. A fantastic friend of mine called Glenn Daniels, who who was a casting director of, um, um, for Warner Brothers. Um, he worked with Marion Doherty, mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, I, I had a fantastic time. I, I, I looked next door was the was how was the ponytail English actor? Um, not the muscles from Brussels, but the other one who was kind of similar. Anyway, I can't remember. Um, not Ke it? Kelly LeBrock. Not Kelly oh, LeBrock. Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal. <laughs> and he was next door to the house, and it was a <coughs> I lived in this beautiful house. I moved around a bit. She was my teenage around. crush, Kelly LeBrock. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, beautiful. We loved her. Stunning. <laughs> I think she started puberty for me. Did watching she? uh Bless was it her. uh Weird Science? Ah. Oh. When they, yeah. Amazing. I used to jog around underneath the Hollywood sign. I did everything. I just I used yeah. to work out in Jane Fonda Studios. I used to go down to, to Venice. I used to, I did everything. That's why you liked, you know, all the cool people. I was there. No, 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 I mean, not really. I, really I was in the dollar store getting groceries and no, getting no, the no, bloody I bus everywhere. I, I wasn't really, I wasn't, I just, I didn't bump into people. I mean, I just, I loved it. Actually, I really did. Weather's oh, lovely. You. Weather's cool. Um, yeah, so anything yeah. is possible. And I, and that, I just believed it. I just believed it. When was this? Is this like 86 or something or? Um, Ooh. Yes, or was it just before? Um, I can't remember when I went to Los Angeles. End of the 80s, I think. I went there a few times, actually, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I read an interview. W w actually, you were in Visage now. I'm, now I'm confused. You were in Visage or you weren't? I was for a while. I was... Um, 
Yeah, if anyone wants to Google this that's listening to the podcast and not watching the, the TV version, <laughs> if you Google Visage and uh, was it the Pleasure Boys? And the Pleasure Boys and, and the, the Anvil. Anvil. I knew Steve and so he asked me you to. You can see I Larry think. singing with Steve Strange. Yeah. Who I'm actually, when he's doing the thing with the, the drill and the hammer, he forgets his lip he syncing, does. doesn't he? Bless him. <laughs> you watch that closely. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, I watched the whole video then he was like, ah! <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, do. Um, at the end of that video, you can hear Paula Yates laughing in the background, and she also. And yeah, that was, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Seriously, you can. You can hear her at the yeah. very end of the take. There was a sort of, there was a sort of. I can hear her. Yeah. Because what's that mid set? Is he meant to do some like construction sounds with the hammers and I the drills think and they things? They use they use the construction and, yeah. and the drill when they recorded the track. Yeah. So they they kind of. So he was miming up. that, but he f he forgets he to forgets. sing. It's it's funny. It's it's cute. Oh, <laughs> bless him. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, Steve's a very bright, lovely, <coughs> gorgeous, gorgeous guy and um, deserves more credit, really, I, I think, certainly these days. He's mm. lovely. He's really well, hopefully that album he's come out with, not to go off topic, uh, that will come again, because I really do think that's... I hope so. I mean, have you heard it? It's, I think it's... I've, as, I've, as yeah, I have. Um, he's just done... Um, he just, he's just come back from Japan. Yeah, he's been doing quite a few things. And he just did a, something really big with the um, Czech uh, Philharmonic Orchestra. He's do, he is doing stuff. Yeah, because the documentary I saw, that I, maybe the way they edited it, it was just like, I think they made him look a bit, not stupid, but like he was trying to recreate Visage and it wasn't working. And But now, six years later, you're like, oh, wow, it really is working. And yeah, the music's mm. fantastic. Like, I think it's the Ultravox, some of the Ultravox people in as well, right? I think... Um, and I yeah, heard there he's is, used like only synthesizers from that era, not past 1984. So it's really got that, uh, got that amazing, sound. authentic sound. Really, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's 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 certain elements of, of artistic um, uh, clashes, I think. <laughs> but you know, with the reforming of it. But um, I read an interview with you actually. I'm not sure it was recently. If you want to go over this a little bit, or maybe you don't, just let me know about uh, the drug situation. How like did that affect anything? If you because you, you were you were battling addiction, went into rehab. Is that correct? Correct or I did, I did, and that's why you asked me. You says, "How do you get on stage?" <laughs> I said, "When you said to me, how do you get on stage of after all those events?" <laughs> I mean, well, of course. Um, I mean, it's just part of the culture. It was part of the culture, mm. and um, and that was something that. Uh, that was just in me, I suppose. It was just in me, and because um, this is like the pre, I guess, acid house and yeah. ecstasy and things, wasn't it? So this I guess the, the drugs then were speed, coke, yeah. and heroin, right? Well, I, I, I was mainly in the uppers. I, I didn't like just being, yeah. So it was just for me. It was I went into um, a rehab just um, really when the acid house stuff was kicking off. Mm. Um, did it affect the work in the sense that you felt you couldn't go on in the end that unless you'd taken some of this kind of Dutch courage in a sense the worst thing actually was, was it coming crutch? off it because I tried to do it on my own um, for quite a while mm. and the worst thing was trying to do it on my own mm. um, without you know other other. I mean I'm supported and I still am today um, um, with certain you know people that I go to and meetings that I go to but the worst thing was doing it was actually coming off off um, stimulants and drugs, mm. and then <laughs> trying to and people I would I would be filming on a, I would be filming and the producers would find me asleep in in wardrobes on the set, I mean I got <coughs> sacked from quite a few different things I mean it was just awful and um, and I was desperately trying to white knuckle coming off 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 certain substances and mm. I think that that's what was difficult, mm. you know and. Um, how, what do you need in, when you said you needed someone to help you in the sense of what someone can is, is like an objective outside view no I just I think doing it on your own is difficult I think if you do it in a group mm -hmm. um, I think that um, 12 step programs I went in you know I, I went into a treatment center that that um, I'm bleeding here I must be um, a bit nervous about talking about <laughs> what I'm talking um, I just for me I oh. needed to be <laughs> have a tissue my have dear. A tissue darling for the blood um, I just it's it is quite personal but I I mean that's what I do and mm. I found that that I found that being part of a group mm. and therefore doing it um, in um, 
along a 12 step kind of Betty Ford sure is what worked for me and I found it the hard bit was was the period that I tried to do it on my own because mm. once once I I mean it's still tough living life on life's terms without the help of, of any kind of drug or is or that part of the La, La Choquette show do you deal with that at all I do it this, it's yeah? actually I do put that in because I've got yeah you know pretty good knowledge of it so yeah <laughs> so that's what i'm saying choquette for me i was able but you know i had an aunt fantastic my auntie gwen and she used to say why let the truth stand in the way of a good story mm. <laughs> and and you know there's there's i've colored it and i've heightened stories and maybe maybe things are true maybe they're not mm. in my show and so i like keeping people guessing on, yeah and on the back foot slightly so I do bring that in. I bring everything. I bring everything that I, and I've come to a period in my life and uh, the age that I am, and it really, I don't care anymore. I just don't, you know, it, I don't, I don't like, I don't have anything to, to hide particularly. So I d I'm not trying to be. Not worried about else. shocking people. Mm. <laughs> you just get more. You, I guess you just <laughs> yeah. get more comfortable in your own skin, don't you? I'm I think when when you're young or in your twenties, I remember this that you kind of like trying to establish so yourself and know who you are and, and be something and then you kind of you, it levels out when you're about 30 32 i think <clears throat> so and 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 you stop trying to be and i think the ego kind of fades a little bit yeah and then you kind of relax and then you the, the i looked at people levels. in the tube on my way here and i was kind of thinking you know they looked so lovely and cool and and hip and i when i was their age i just used to think i never used to think that i was ever 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 and we probably were do you know what I mean? It's like... No, you were very hip. Well, <laughs> it's hard because w when I was in treatment, actually, at the t it's weird, and I, I walked in and there were some people in there and who, who I class who were really scary people, mm. I thought, and they were at Crazy Larry's or um, at the... <coughs> I don't know if they were at the Blitz, actually, but these particular people, and they stunned into the silence because they were scared to talk to me. Mm. <laughs> but yeah. I used to look at them and think, they were really scary. So it's odd, isn't it? It's, yeah. like w it's nothing, it's like we are what, we, we have a different view of ourselves to what other people think. Yeah, but no, um, definitely. Then it all comes into one and it's fine, I think. So this show we've got uh, next month actually, is it Thursday the 15th, Saturday the 17th? No, this month. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's May! It's I keep May. Thinking. Yeah. It's not April anymore, okay. May, Sanctum right. Soho, Sanctum yeah. Hotel Soho. So Thursday, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, Thursday, Thursday, Saturday, 8 p.m. Sunday, 3 p.m. Um, and then I'm taking it up to, to Edinburgh at The Space at Symposium, venue 43 at 11.40 p.m. I In went for... Oh, so, no, please No, continue. no, no, it's, it's a late-ish slot, 10.40. It's a late mm. shot, but... That's when things get crazy, though. You yeah. can get crazy because it's I late mean, at I night. Just, I've been to Edinburgh. I, I've done it. Uh, four years ago, I was up in Edinburgh, and I did a show, and I was there for a month, and... Um, and and it's fine. It was sort of one or two in the afternoon. It's fine. I was, but that was just, you know, I it was such fun at night. And it's well, just you get like a better crowd. Everyone's a little bit on it and just that fun. Little bit. And yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and shock is is quite edgy, you know. And I just I just wanted to people, and 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 if they throw things at me, that's great. So, <laughs> so I'm thinking that maybe. Do you ever get hecklers? I don't mind. Great. I Would just yes, I do a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I mean, and I love that if something happens. That's when you can use it. Yeah, it's yeah. great. It's like, that's when, uh, that's great. Is it a work in progress in the sense that when you do these sanctum uh, dates, Thursday the 15th, Saturday the 17th, and Sunday the 18th, is th in this like month or two month period between then and Edinburgh, is there going to be a change for the Edinburgh well, audience well, or is it, me, is there an alterance or? Not very many. Um, you're right. At the moment it's a two um, part show actually. Right. And I, I do have to condense, condense it down it. to an hour, an hour and five minutes. Why is that? Because people are less patient and they just want to get on I to could. the next thing? Or why I, is well, Edinburgh different Edinburgh, in that sense? Or? No, most Edinburgh shows, now most people know that Edinburgh is, is a one-act show. Mm. And it's a one-act um, hour and... Our, the show I was in was about an hour and 15. Um, I may be able to do an hour and 15 and get it all in an hour. So what's shock at? In what, it, what is it now, like two hours or an hour and 45? Or? Well, actually... I do, I, I go on at eight and I come down at 10 and there's about a 20 minute interval. So it's quite long. Okay. Um, uh, but it doesn't seem like that when you're in the audience. 
<laughs> it doesn't seem like that when you're on the stage. You want um, more. <clears throat> it feels like five minutes. I just need to, I need to um, be economical with the show. And How many people on the team that are developing <coughs> develop this with It's you? myself and, and, and my co-writer, um, a Welsh actor, a fantastic actor called Robin Griffith, actor, director, writer. Um, and I've worked with him for years and years, and um, and he is from Anglesey, North Wales as well. He does lots of things. He's been in everything. Big up the Welsh massive. Big it <laughs> up. Um, and he and I write well together. We just have the same, you know. So so it just the same sense of humour, and we take and we've got, we are actually pitching this idea. We've we've worked out where she goes because in a way, the show is like a pilot. Mm. Well, I think like what we're going to do what, yeah. what's we're, we've is that got happen? great yeah. ideas we've got a radio show and we've got a sitcom uh -huh. so um, so we're uh, that's where we're, we're doing right now so it's what would the idea be like an absolutely fabulous esque thing or Lala at the end of the show Lala had come to a point in her life and um, I keep yawning I was up decorating you can see <laughs> it's okay um, so really the TV show starts from, from where the show, the, the live show ends. And it's where she is. And she runs, I don't know if I would say, um, I'm not going to say too much actually, but, but she's, she's, um, she has, um, sh she's kind of set up in life and, and things develop out of it. Mm. And um, wait, I'm just going to keep it a little bit because it's still we're still kind of keeping it under wraps no no that's cool because that's all right well if you have any, uh, any use any recording equipment we can obviously help that's good yeah that's really so if good. you want to do a radio pilot as well you can i guess use all this stuff if you wish i'm currently doing a welsh soap on radio actually ah. um called um pont cam and it's on bbc <laughs> yeah pont cam which means um wonky bridge or or curved bridge. Is it in Welsh language? Yes, it is in Welsh language. It's written by a fantastic writer called Aled P. Jones. Um, <coughs> and Not we're walking in the air, Aled Jones. No, it is. Uh, no, I know he does get letters at this Aled. <laughs> uh, you know, oh, I loved you on uh, on uh, songs of praise last week. <laughs> <laughs> will you will you sing that? Or, or actually, he's had other letters he sent me last week. No, this is a this is a fantastic writer called Aled P. Jones. Um, so I'm up in Wales doing that. Why was I talking about that? I can't remember. Well, we were talking Pont about the radio. You were going to turn less shocking. Yeah, 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 into yeah, a yeah, radio yeah. show and or television. And that's what I, I was. We were chatting about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Damn. So, yeah. So Edinburgh, hopefully, if you're seen by the right people, you can. The 18th to the 23rd, 11:40, the space at symposium venue and if people want like regular updates on this i guess you've got a twitter which would be yeah. you got I twitter what is it i just at laurian rich i've said at laurian rich because it's sort of i'm hoping self-prophecy <laughs> so that one day i will be rich which i never have been so it's at laurian rich is uh, my twitter and you have a website as well i do www.laurianrichards.com lovely um, and there's also a what i have a happen to lala choquette facebook page i agree with yeah you. and um yeah so, so yeah if you want to find her if you want to see her show it's uh may which is this month i should get that right uh the <laughs> thursday the 15th saturday the 17th and sunday the 18th and evening performances start at 8 o'clock at the Sanctum Hotel, which is in Soho. What road is that on, It's Larry? Warwick, number 20, Warwick Street. Which and is off Beak Street, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, kind of behind Carnaby yeah, Street, kind of thing. Yeah, just off, I can't remember, I can't remember if it's Berwick or Beak. I think it could be Beak, just off Beak. It runs parallel it? to Regent, kind of, doesn't it? It's, yeah, parallel yeah, it's to Regent. It's one street back. We got tickets.com <laughs> slash Choquette. And yeah, thirteen fifty, and uh, yeah, don't it's miss it. It's such good value. It could be amazing. Oh my yeah. God, it's such good value. And get it now, so you can say, "Ha, ah, that hit TV show. We saw the, origi yeah. the original show." Yep. <laughs> yeah. So it's really exciting. It I'm is, just. Yeah. It is actually seriously, seriously. It's like I'm just. I'm loving it. I'm really loving it. I also use a guest artist called Daisy Bell, who's um, and she's a singer songwriter. She's eighteen. Um, oh. Amazing song. I've seen you in pictures actually in the show with t dancers as well. Is yeah. there like a bunch of dancers in I with do. You? I have a pool of dancers from somewhere called Body Works, um, Cambridge Performing Arts, and they're fantastic. I have five gorgeous 
robots. <laughs> and um, so there's all sorts of people in so my these dances. Are the, the, this generation's tick and tuck or whatever. That's it. Yeah. I, d- I phoned Tim and I said, please, can you come? Could you, could you come? And, you know, and he was busy because he was at a Star <laughs> Wars convention because he was in there in the He was. He was one of Jabba. Yeah, the, yeah, he was. A, yeah, one of Tim Dry is one of Jabba's palace's aliens. And oh. actually, Barbie Wilde went on to be uh, the female Cenobite she in Hellraiser 2, wasn't she? Yeah, She's yeah. like a horror icon. She now. is a horror, completely, and an authoress at, to boot. I made Alex sit through the Hellraisers, I think, just before. <laughs> I had to really? bring it, there's so many films she's not seen, I had to kind of bring up to speed. Well, I hadn't seen any, ho- I wasn't big on horror. Um, so we spent last Halloween month, October, I guess, yeah, watching many, many They're really films. good films, though. <laughs> well, the Hellraiser, the first two especially. One that they kind yeah, of been fil- filmed in Britain uh, as an angle to it, and just the whole idea of and like the Cenobites Bobby and the pleasure and pain and the that fetish thing that's kind of like become de rigueur now, huge, I, I kind of. But then huge, 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 and yeah. it wasn't at once. It's very culty. And Bobby, Bobby, and her her partner George, who was in Sailor. I don't know if you remember, there was a band the late uh, late seventies called Sailor George. Um, George. Anyway, they came to stay with me, and a, a friend of mine who's a writer. Yeah. Um, just went the female Cenobite. He could he <laughs> saw the female Cenobite and uh, this friend of mine who, who writes fantastic things, comedy, com- lots of comedy shows, yeah. and he was struck dumb. I am hoping. Um, I have been asked to appear. I don't know if I can say this, but um, um, I've been asked to appear in a couple of shows in Edinburgh. Um, mm. Stephen K. Amos, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. also possibly mm. Russell Grant show. Russell Grant has in oh, Stephen K. Amos. He's a black actor, isn't he? Stephen K. Amos. Yes. Or no, a, a, a uh, comedian. He's a comedian. Yes. He's fabulous. Really fantastic guy. So, um, so he does. Yeah. So I've been there. I mean, it's nothing sorted. Do yet, both. Do all the shows. Do, do all three. All of them. Yeah. Do yeah. All f- yeah. So Just change st- hats. We'll get new hats. <laughs> they won't even know. <laughs> It'll be yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's what I'll do. <laughs> Anyway, are they so around the same time? If they well, that's the thing. They're on the same week. Is that the oh, same right, woman yeah. from the yeah. Choquette show. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> not me. So th- that was another reason, actually, really good question, is to get a slot where you know it's not going to clash. And they, yeah. all the really yeah. big names, are all on around eight. Can you imagine okay. double booking so yourself okay. on your own night. Oh. <laughs> 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 Which one so that was the other reason. It was either a lady or there. No, oh, brilliant. Thank you. Awesome. I keep well. yawning. I'll tell you why. Because I'm painting in the morning, though. I've just put my house on the market, and I'm. <laughs> it's getting on. I'm trying to sell it. So I'm paying to Well, that's all right. Uh, Larry, thank you so much for coming it's down. It's a real yeah, pleasure. No, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's our pleasure. Ah, oh, thank you. It's been it's been great, and, and it just, you're really bouncy, and, and <laughs> it, it's really easy to talk. Actually. I just kind of got bored not doing much at the moment, so I thought we'll, we should do a podcast. This would be fun. Fantastic. Because, yeah, you, if you try and like ring someone that you don't know and go, do you want to come and talk to you about your life? They'd be like, nah, don't want to no. talk to you. But but podcast. then you have somebody like me. Okay. Oh. No, you're amazing. I know, <laughs> oh, no. all your stuff, like Thank literally, you. I no, no, grew he, up. He means like in you. that period. When <laughs> I first met Robert to. Perino, I met him in a curry house two years ago, and I went, "Oh, this is Robert." And because for some weird reason, I remembered him from the tabloids in the eighties. I don't know yeah. why. And Emma Ridley, he went on. They went on to the Word and and Amanda Duchovny and that kind yeah, of period. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. all that stuff, and I was like, Perino. I finished his name for him. He went, huh? And I think he kind of took a shine to me then at that point but I've known him ever since and I mean Aww. thanks to him and we've met all these like great people like you who are all from that period which is the most fascinating corridor of time ever in my life so like Thank you, you and Steve and uh, Robert and Spanow Bally and the Blitz and stuff all that stuff I totally find fascinating so thank Aww. you thank you and as a result I guess we go to Torture Garden which I guess is a, <laughs> the Diet Coke version of the Blitz but it's the nearest we can kind of get to it yeah. yeah electronic music and people in like beautiful costumes and stuff so yeah Thank you. Pleasure. Yeah, you no, wonderful it's woman. It's, it's pleasure. A pleasure. Thank you. So yeah, Lala Choquette, the one woman amazing show uh, starring Larry, of course, is uh, on in May in two weeks, uh, Thursday the 15th, Saturday the 17th and Sunday the 18th. Uh, you can book tickets at uh, wegottickets.com slash forward slash Choquette yep. and they're 1350 and that's at the Sanctum Hotel on what road? Warwick Street. Warwick number Street. Number 20 in which Soho. Is, uh, yes, in Soho, which is near Carnaby Street. If you can't find it, ask someone when you get out of the tube <laughs> at Oxford Street. Or Piccadilly. It's Piccadilly. Tourists. Piccadilly. Or Piccadilly. Piccadilly. It's a bit long the walk there. Three minutes walk. So yes, there we go. Thank Larry, you. Thank you. Oh, what's thank your you. Twitter? At Laurian Rich. And your yeah. website? www.laurianrichards.com There we go. And uh, in a non-Welsh thank accent, you. I'm Ethan McKinley. And you can find me Ethan McKinley UK well. on Twitter. And Alex Bell. Uh, Alex Consuelo. 
on Twitter. Come on, say it with more confidence. <laughs> Alex Consuelo. Push that yeah. shit out. There we go. Yeah. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye.